Yes, good morning. Good morning. This is Michael Davis. Good morning, Mr. Davis. Um, are you able to turn your uh, video on? Um, yes, my video is on. Okay. I can see you. All right. Well, if you can see us, it's great. For some reason, we're unable to see. Uh, we're unable to see you, but we can hear you. Uh, you can go ahead if you'd like. Hello. Can you hear me? We can. Go ahead. Um. Yes. On the behalf of my family, I don't feel that he should be um um pardoned or paroled because we are staying a whole lot in our family and stuff like that, and it's still a hardship on us. And I lost my brother at an early age, you know. And at the time of the incident, Bryson knew what he was doing before he got himself in the situation and stuff like that. So, and I also sent them my letter in to them. To y'all, so y'all can be read, so y'all can read it for the board. And um, that's all I had to say right now. Thank you so much, Mr. Davis. We appreciate yes, your time. Uh, Miss Davis, are you available? Could I, um, oh. Madam Secretary? I do. I do have some que questions for Mr. Davis. Of course, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Davis, could you could you maybe be a little bit more specific about how? the um how the law you know the loss of the victim the death of the victim has affected your family like specific ways that it's affected your family well it's affected my family because my old my oldest son is named after um my brother and he hadn't had the opportunity to, to meet his uncle and he got a lot of other nieces also and at the time of the burden me and my brother was close at the time so i never get the need of growing up with an older brother and learning other stuff within my life. And also it hurt my mother and pop, my father, my father right now, he, he still be feeling the pain and the burden every time his birthday come through. So, you know, and I feel like the situation, what happened is that it could have, it could have been avoided and my brother would be here. He'd be able to have kids. He be able to have his own business. You never know what he could have been doing right now with his life. Okay, thank you. Mm. Do any other board members have questions for Mr. Davis? I do not. I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sharon Davis, are you available? Right. So it looks like we have um, two folks who are unable to uh, get in to speak in opposition, but we can return to this case whenever we're able to get them in. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Mohinsky. Okay, we're going to move on to case number two, Mr. Daniel Rosado, Jr. On behalf of Mr. Rosado, we have uh, Mr. Gary Olinger. Okay. Um, we we is uh we have somebody also with the last name of Soto here to speak in support. Are you available? Mr. Oling, are you are you connected? Good morning. Mr. Oling, are you 
It says you're connecting to audio. So we'll just give it one second so that he's able to uh, connect. Oh, it says he did. Good morning. Okay. Mr. Olin, are you? It says you're connecting to audio. So we'll just give it one second so that he's able to uh, connect. Oh, it says he did. Um, Chaplain Soto, are you, um, are you live streaming the, uh, the hearings? We were having a bit of an echo and I just wanted to, wanted to make sure that, uh, what do you mean? Had live off. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can. Thank you. Okay. You can go ahead and speak if, if you'd like. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, it's my first time, so you have to walk me through. Did you have anything specific, a, a statement you wanted to make on behalf of Mr. Rosado? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Okay, great. First of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be here. Um, I'm, my name is Chaplain Sonia Soto, and um, by the grace of God, I work for the uh, Philadelphia Police Department as a a police chaplain. Um, many years ago, maybe about 34 years ago, I had the privilege to meet Mr. Daniel Rosario, Rosado, um, when I used to work at the prison system back in the 80s. I had the honor of meeting him. So um, he was one of my residents. And I, um, what I did was when we used to come up to give church services. He was always there at the uh, chapel. And I noticed something about him that he was a very um, likable person, friendly, willing to help out. So what I did was I put him as my chaplain's coordinator. And he would help out with the services. He would make sure that the men would come out for the to come out for the services. He would um, be there to have them seated. He would talk to our officers to let them know that the church is running and, and they were ready. And um, he would give them the Bibles. He would hand out the religious lit literature. And he was a, a great help to me. And um, so I kept contact with him for many years and um, did follow up with him. And I noticed that uh, in him, I've met him since he was young. He was young back then. And uh, he was just, um, recently incarcerated. But then uh, throughout the years, I've noticed that in him was a big change. Um, and I know that most of us, when we're young, we commit a lot of mistakes in our lives because we're young, we don't think. And I, I believe that now that he's an adult, he has thought over everything he has done in his life and he has changed for the best and he's doing excellent. And I am so proud to be his spiritual mother to continue to be part of, you know, his walk in his life. I visited him in several occasions. I go up when I used to, when he was in grade for up, when they sent him upstate, I went up there too. And I, I gave him follow-up and brought services there as well. Me and my husband, we, we, we really got along with him very well. And, um, he's very, he, and I told him, Hey, I'm here for you. Whenever you need me, if they, if they ever release you, I have a recovery house. You can come to my recovery house too. We're willing to help him with employment and, and help him on his feet. Um, why he's, um, doing his, um, back into society, working back into society. Now, let me tell you, he can be a great asset to us because I've seen the great change in him and he's very humble guy and he's has gotten himself together. And um, he's done a lot of, um, um, he went to a lot of classes, did a lot of different things, learned a lot of things in his life while he's, while he's been incarcerated. I've seen a, a big change in him. And I think that maybe he deserves a second chance because I think that what we need to How do- I send as, this message? <laughs> as a society, what send I think- these people that, over here. We should be, um, I think, I believe in mercy. And I believe in second chances because I've seen it throughout my walk. And um, yeah, I see people right in there. good. And let me tell you, I don't do this for everybody, but I am I am glad to be here for him. Excuse me, Secretary Trustee. Yes. Um, I, 
Could you ask whoever it is to please mute themselves? Absolutely. We're trying to figure out who that is right now. Thank you, Member Grayson. Um, thank you so much, Chaplain Soto. Do any board members have any questions for the chaplain? No? I do not. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, Chaplain. Thank right. you for having me again. Of course, of course. Mr. Olinger, do you have any uh, statements that you'd like to make on behalf of Mr. Rosado? Uh, yes. And are you able to hear me? We are. Thank you. Okay, good. Having audio video issues here. Um, I just wanted to mention, uh, you probably know most everything that, uh, that Mr. Soto has uh, been in for 38 years. Um, he's been a model um, inmate here at Greaterford. He got full support of the DOC for this. Um, you probably know this, but he was 18 at the time of this, um, of this uh, incident. Had it been like four months earlier, I believe he would be a juvenile lifer and probably not be here. Um, he is remorseful. His risk scores are, are very low. He's not considered a, lit, a risk for the community if he is released. Um, his reentry plan is very strong. He, he um, has good family support as well as work possibilities and so on. He's um, above average here uh, in work and in housing reports. So he's essentially a model inmate who is probably going to be a benefit to the community if, um, if he is released as opposed to uh, a risk or, or a, um, anyone you can be concerned about. One thing I, I can't confirm, but I was <coughs> advised of that I don't know if you know or not, but he was also another guy that was offered a plea bargain. I believe it was like 20, and he chose not to take it at the time, thinking he would go to court and possibly uh, you know, end up getting a much shorter sentence, of course, than a life sentence. That's about it. Like, I can't say any more than he's been a, a very model person. He's been someone that's worked um, with the um, men in religious services. He's been very helpful to the other inmates trying to keep people um, that are living here on the right track and preparing themselves for police as well. That's all I have Thank you. Thank you so much. Do the board members have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Olinger, as always. Um, and Ms. Doherty, is it, uh, are you on the screen right now? I am. Wonderful. Thank you so much. If, if you have a statement, you can go ahead and make it. Well, uh, I'd like to say good morning to everyone to start. And I'd like to thank you in advance for your undivided attention this morning, since this is our only opportunity for the family and friends of murdered victim, Michael Kogar to voice our opposition, granting a life of parole for Daniel Rosado. As you know, I am Patty Kilgariff Doherty. My sister Maureen Kilgariff is here with me. We are here jointly to the best of our ability to convey feelings of all of us. That is, as a whole, family and friends united against the release of Daniel Rosado back into society with a life of parole. I would like to ask each board member, have you had the opportunity in time to read any of the trial transcripts? Uh, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Um, ma'am, if you just want to continue on with your statement, that I think that would be, um, that would be okay. great. They can answer questions at the end. Okay. I also Thank would you. like to know if each and every member of the board was able to read every victim impact statement that we've sent by family and friends that was so painfully written. And did you read Daniel Rosado's apology letter? I'm hopeful that in closing, that in doing so, you will see as we did, that Daniel Rosado's incarceration of life without parole is a direct result of decisions made by him and his accomplice during what was just a chapter of an ongoing crime spree. As to my understanding, clemency applications are submitted to the board and then circulated to the sentencing judge for the judge's recommendation. 
the Honorable Juanita Kidstow was a sentencing judge, and as we all know, her recommendation is not to be heard. The prestigious judge imposed a sentence of life without parole using the Pennsylvania state guidelines. The severity of the offense, prior criminal records, the evidence heard at the trial, and any remorse shown. Finally, protection of the public. The Honorable Juanita Stout, notably being a fair and honest judge, following the letter of the law, weighed all these factors before rendering her decision of life without the possibility of parole for reasons including the safety of the general public. The severity of this crime was the execution style senseless murder of Michael Kilgar, our brother, by Daniel Rosado and his co-conspirator. The statistics are for recidivism is not so great for the state of PA. One third of the po bed population of the incarcerated are from repeat offenders. The board cannot guarantee the safety of my family nor the unsuspecting public from any new offenses by Daniel Rosado. Statistics also show the more stipulations a parolee has placed upon them shows a higher rate of recidivism. To grant him life of parole because good behavior in prison, I can only say one thing. Reginald McFadden was released because after 23 years because of his spotless prison record, but only took him 92 days to murder again and commit other heinous crimes against society. Our family has been victimized once again during this process. Daniel Rosado has had plenty of help and time to prepare himself for this day. Our family had three weeks, three weeks of being in shock since this was settled three, 38 years ago, three weeks of being ill over this. As for our brother, Kevin, you nearly pushed him over the edge. Kevin gave thought to appealing before the board today, but mentally and literally physically shaking with anxiety and fear decided it was best for his two sisters to speak on his behalf. Kevin, like all of us, wants the justice given to remain life without the possibility of parole. That's what we plead here. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Do the board members have any questions? Yeah, I, I, I would like to just say, ma'am, I, I want to thank you for your very informative uh, testimony. Thank you. Yes, and not to echo um, Dr. Williams in that regard. I'm hoping that my appeal today here makes an impact. And if you did read the letters, you would know how impacted our family has been. Thank you so have, much for, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a, a, a surviving victim, my brother Kevin, who was there in that incident, in that murder, attempted murder on him. And would we be at a different thing had my other brother been passed? You know, this was a heinous crime. A crime spree. <clears throat> Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. I, I also you. just want to say, ma'am, I'm I'm sorry, especially at, at this time of year. You know, very close to when the, you know, the murder occurred. That, um, you know, for everything that you and your family are going through. That's, and I understand that uh, if he's denied today, that there's a reconsideration process that can happen in a year, and following that, two years. So. This could go on and on for my family every year at this time. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your time. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, moving on, we can go on to the next case. Uh, Mr. Willie Seals Jr. On behalf of Mr. Seals, we have Sabira Williams, and then we also have Mr. Olinger again. Uh, Mr. Olinger, I see you on the screen. Uh, so we can go ahead and start with you if you have a statement you'd like to make on behalf of Mr. Seals. Hang on. Assuming you can hear me. Um, we can. Mr. Mr. Seals will be 84 years old tomorrow. He's been in jail for over 40 years. He's one of the very few um, inmates who has been in uh, prison for um, that long with no misconduct. Mr. Seals, before the uh, incident that happened, which um, when I read it and talk with him, it's, it seems like a, a crime of passion, even though he tends to say it was uh, he, he was fearing for his life in defense. But uh, 
it does appear to be a crime of passion. It's not something he normally did. He has a good history of work. He has um, a military history, merchant marine history, as well as a trucking company history. So he actually is prepared for release with retirement benefits, Social Security, and so on. So his release would be strong. His risk scores are very low. Um, everything that we um, test and, and speak with him about um, suggests that he would not be a um, risk to the community and they, he'd be able to survive here. Um, he is able to go to a veteran's center. Uh, we have checked on that uh, several times, so that's one of his plans. But he also has a backup plan, uh, one of his daughters who would assist him. And Mr. Seals is very proud that he's he's always worked and so on. And he also, even though despite his age, he plans to work when he's out. One thing I had to pull out of him was, what do you want to do for the community? Or what do you, you know, what else do you want to do? Do you want to give back? And one of the things he does want to do, and he said it, I believe, in some of his writings, he wants to work with the youth and, and try to um, prevent young people from making the mistakes that he has made and that others have made so they can stay out of the prison system. So he's unlikely to, to uh, offend. If you speak with him long enough, um, he likes to tell stories, as you found out during the interviews. Um, he is very remorseful. He's sorry for what did occur. He, he's genuinely sorry and remorseful for that. He does take responsibility for his actions. Um, and he, ha he has gotten the support of the Department of Corrections Phoenix, as well as the Secretary of Corrections for his uh, possible commutation. Thank you so much. Do any board members have any questions for DOC about Mr. Seals? I do not. Thank you. Wonderful. All right, we're going to also call in right now Marquita Greenwood. Ms. Greenwood, are you there? How about Kyle Williams? Hello? Are you there? Yeah. Oh, is this Miss Greenwood? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. You can go ahead and uh, if you do you have a statement you'd like to make. Yes. Okay. Please begin. My name is Marquita Greenwood. I'm Renee Greenwood's second eldest child. Um, my oldest sister is mentally disabled, so I have to speak for both of us. I do not agree with giving Willie Seals a pardon. He destroyed our family. This was premeditated. He said he was going to do it, and he actually did it. This, this, it still hurts really bad. It's, I don't agree with letting him out. I think he would, he, I think he would attempt to hurt me or my, one of my siblings. He's always been very arrogant. He didn't reach out to even apologize until right before this hearing. I was trying to figure out why did he write an apology letter and all these years have passed. And then I, I see why after I received the letter My family has been hurting so bad from this act that he did, this selfish act. And I wouldn't want anyone else or their families to go through this. Thank you so much. Ask, oh, I'm, I'm ask, sorry. Please do not. Do not grant him a pardon, please. Thank do, any you. 
Do any board members have any questions for Ms. Greenwood? I do. I, oh, sorry, Ms. Grace. Oh, oh um, first of all, I want to thank you for um, coming forward. Um, you, um, did you live um, um, with um, Mrs. Uh, Sales? Yes. For how long <laughs> were you, um, how many years did you live with him? Um, 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 I think maybe two. Okay. And can you describe um, what you personally witnessed um, with the relationship between um, him and your mother? And um, if it, I'm sorry, ma'am, if it take, take your time. Okay. It's no rush. It was scary. It was very scary. It it was like torture watching my mom go through so much with him. She tried to leave him several times. He even shot at her once. And okay I, I read your statement um were you nine at the time of your mother's death no how old were you three days before i turned 15 before you turned 15 and you there was another uh sibling of yours that was about nine years old Is that yes correct? my sister marie mm -hmm. and and um during the time of your mother's death were you all um were you living um with um Willie, or were you all in Virginia? No, I went to Virginia because the schools kept going on strike here. And okay. my mom wanted me to get a better education. Okay. So I went there, but it, I was only there for a week. Mm -hmm. Because in, at the end of the week, I was coming back for a party for my birthday. Okay. But he took her life, and that never happened. Okay. All right. I won't ask you any additional questions. Thank you so much. And um, thank you. You're welcome. Ma'am, I, I want to I want to thank you, uh, you know, for your testimony. And I just want to say first that I'm sorry for your loss, especially at this time of the year. Um, I, I just have a couple of questions for you. You, you said something to the effect of uh, that the uh, that Mr. Seals had he said that he was going to if I understood correctly and please correct me if I didn't he was going to shoot your mother yes and he said, yes if he ever tried to leave him he would take her life and how long before the murder did he actually say that to you to me or no, no, I mean, how, you know, your understanding was how long, when did, did, did you hear this yourself or did, was this, was this directly something you heard or was it someone, something that someone else told you that he well, said? I, I heard it myself several times living in the house with him. I see. I see. So, so I guess what I'm trying to say then is, is approximately how long before the murder did you hear that? Like weeks, months, years. Maybe weeks. Weeks. Yeah. Would it surprise you if I told you that Mr. Seals said that the death of your mother was an accident and that he hadn't actually been, he had no intention of killing her? He kicked in our basement window. He came to our home with a gun with the intent to take her life away yeah. and that's what he did so so if if i told you that he had said that he was acting in self-defense would it be your conclusion that he was essentially not presenting the situation as it actually happened that in fact he he wished to assassinate your mother my mother was asleep. 
when he broke into the basement window and went upstairs and did what he did. She, she had her night clothes on because she was asleep. I had to testify in the first trial. The, his lawyer was such a, he was flipping through the pictures. They had that picture stuck in my head from my mom, the way they found her. And she was asleep. It, it couldn't have been self-defense. She didn't have a gun. She had a nightgown on. I'm not going to ask any uh, further questions, but I, I very much appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from board members for Ms. Greenwood? Thank you, Ms. Greenwood. We really do appreciate your time. I believe we also have Ms. Marie Williams. Yes. Ms. Yes. Williams, did you have a, a quick statement you'd like to make? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to read my statement. Um, my name is Marie Williams, daughter of Renee Greenwood. On September the 25th, 1981, at the age of nine years old, my life was changed and destroyed forever. That was the day my mother was murdered by Willie Seals Jr. After living with Willie and watching my mother endure his abuse from shooting at her in the bedroom to holding a knife to her neck and me and my sister running to a payphone to call 911, among other incidents of abuse. My mother finally had the courage to leave him. We were living in our own home away from the physical, verbal, and emotional abuse, and we were happy, but that was short-lived. The emotional abuse, I'm sorry, the defendant illegally entered into our home by breaking a back window and shot my mom in the head and her friend five times. That premeditated, heartless act of murder by Willie left four children me and my siblings without a mother and in so much pain and hurt, even in our present lives. My mom was our everything. Us losing our mother destroyed me as a young child into my teenage years. It caused me to have thoughts of suicide because I thought if I killed myself, I could be with my mother. <laughs> I went through intensive therapy. It had to be put on medication after medication. Due to the violent act of murder, it caused four children to be separated who once were all together in a loving home with their mother. We had to be divided among family members, some out of state. I now have four children who never ever got to see their maternal grandmother. My children often ask about their grandmother, and all I can tell them is about nine years of my life with my mother, because Willie decided to end my mother's life because she loved me. He did not care about her children or her loved ones she would leave behind. Mother's Day is especially hard for me as I watch others celebrate with their mother. I, I didn't have the opportunity that, that I don't have, that I don't have. It took years for the night to go away, as I often dreamed that he would come for me to kill me. Knowing that this man who had no regard for human life to be set free it scares me and has set me back into feeling like that nine-year-old little girl. All the hurt, pain, and anxiety has come back. I find myself crying again all the time, thinking about what this man has done to my mother and how I wish she was here. While being behind bars gave me the peace that he would not, that he wouldn't be able to hurt me or anyone else ever again. I am pleading with the courts to please not allow this man to be set free as my mother isn't here to be free. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for your testimony. We really do appreciate that. Um, any board members have any questions for Ms. Williams? I do not. Thank you for um, coming forward. Ma'am, I, I would just like to say I'm sorry for the pain that you're suffering, especially at, at this time of the year, uh, given uh, the murder. Thank you so much, Ms. Williams. Um, we also have Sarah Stern here on behalf of Mr. Seals. Uh, Ms. Stern, did you have a statement you wanted to make? No, we have nothing to add um, here today. The, the DOC is the best point of information on this case. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any board members have any questions uh, for Ms. Stern? No, I do not. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ms. Stern. We appreciate your time. Uh, we actually are going to go back to the first case. We have um, Miss Sharon Davis, who was unable to join earlier. She is in here now. Um, Miss Davis. Oh, did she? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, uh, actually, we were just able to add uh, Miss Yvette Seals Brown. So we'll go back to uh, back to Mr. Uh, Willie Seals. Um, and we're going to have Miss Yvette Seals Brown. Back to Willie Seals. Miss Brown, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Good morning. Um, if you have a statement to read on behalf of your father, you can go ahead. Brown, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can. And do you actually have the live stream running behind you? I don't know. I was getting yes, kind of confused. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if you could um, just stop the live stream okay. from playing because we're getting some feedback. Go ahead. Brown, are you okay. There? I don't. I'm not sure how to do it. Do you actually have a live stream running behind you? I don't know. I was getting kind of confused. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Let me get out of here. I'll just say it. Oh, it looks she just dropped off. We'll have to try to get her back in then. Um, so now we will return to case number one, Richard Brinson, Jr., Miss Sharon Davis is here. Miss Davis? Miss Sharon Davis, are you there? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Did you have something you wanted to say to the board? Yes, my name Please is Sharon Davis. I'm Eric Davis' sister. And I'm just, um, I wanted to let y'all know that I don't think Mr. Brinson should be paroled. Okay. Do any board members then have any questions for Ms. Davis? I do not. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, uh, thank you for your testimony. Could you uh, be a little bit, you know, more specific about why um, you don't think the applicant should receive a commutation and how the crime has affected you and your family members? It has affected the whole family a whole lot. Um, my brother is dead. He has... Um, I have three sons that was not here, was able to get to see him. Okay. And wasn't able to get to see him. I have one son here right now that would like to speak. His name is Forrest. Hello, yes, how you doing? Um, my name Hello. is Forrest Scotland. Um, so I was unable to, you know, my parents there, um, my mom is from uh, West Philly, um, North, North Philly, excuse me. Um, let's just say Philadelphia in general. 
Um, one of my favorite shows is um, Fresh Prince, you know, um, and, you know, they said born and raised, you know, never got to play in the playground with my um, my uncle and, you know, you know, chill and relax, you know, all that good stuff. And um, it really sucks because I wish that, um, you know, we could have just hung out. They said I looked like him a lot, too. And um, it really uh, it really affects me a lot. Especially seeing my uh, my family and you know how they're affected by this, and um, I would really just you know like to see justice done. Um, you know, it would have been great just to you know just maybe you know like at like at the end of the, the song, um, like he said, you know, just hang with my um, my uh, uncle and we could have went to Bel Air. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Any questions from the board members? I have one, Janice Davis. I have one more. My name is Janice Davis. I'm the baby girl of the family. And I felt as though that he shouldn't be released because it's like double jeopardy. And our family has went, went through a lot because of this. And I understand that he took the rap for all the rest of them that stabbed my brother. And he he took the rap. And whereas they got my other brother for the rap of growing up the motorcycle club because they say uh, it was a revenge killer, which it wasn't. And then on top of that, we got one in jail, one dead. And then I was wow. institutionalized, institutionalized for, for a mental breakdown. And also, they tried to run down my older sister and my baby brother when all this went down. So I really don't think uh, that he should be out. And if he do, and they y'all do decide to put him out, uh, uh, let him come out, then I think also my brother should be released. Uh, he's been in there 40 years, all his adult life. He hasn't even... Uh, touch the surface of being free, you know? So that's my statement and that's what I stand by. So um, like I said, if he get out, then I think it should be a way to let my brother out. Cause he's still pleading himself innocent. It's just that they only gave him two options, either the death penalty or life in prison. And of course he's going to take life in prison. So, you know, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions from the board members? No, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your time. We also have Elder Edwin Franklin here in support of Mr. Brinson. Mr. Franklin, are you able to hear me? Elder Franklin, are you able to hear me? All right, we're going to actually, I think, uh, have Elder Franklin give his testimony via phone. He's having a little bit of a um, an audio issue. All right, Elder Franklin, here's Secretary Trustee. Good morning, Elder Franklin. Um, I have Elder Franklin on the phone, and he is here to uh, say some words in support of Mr. Richard Brinson, Jr. Elder Franklin, you can go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but if you have the live stream going in the background, you're going to need to turn that off. Okay, go ahead. Uh, good, after, good morning. My name is Elder Franklin. I am a pastor in Philadelphia. I am a friend, and I was the very first uh, big brother through the Big Brother Association for Richard Brinson. I've known him the... Um, uh, the last three years before he um, was committed, uh, he has always been an excellent person. He took care of his uh, parag paraplegic mother and uh, three sisters um, uh, from the age of 12 to 16. He did everything from watching, helping homework, uh, taking her to the hospital and all those things that he could do. 
Uh, he's a very good young man. Uh, he got mixed up into a situation where he was not um, really at fault at, and he, um, has, in the prison, I understand he has been an uh, excellent person in helping out at the prison. He has uh, sent, oh, at least six guys to me who got out. Some of them say he was their uh, brother. Some said he was big brother. And some even came saying he was their dad and saying how he helped them during the time that they were in prison uh, to maintain their cool so that they were able to get out. Um, he, as I understand, also worked inside the prison helping in the uh, uh, hospital several times catching COVID, but several times returning to the hospital to work in the hospital. Uh, we have, for the last 10 years, had a place for him to come because we were still waiting for some type of uh, hearing um, to get a chance to for him to get out. Uh, we have a place for him. We have a, a, a job for him. Um, and uh, our family is waiting on him. Our church members is waiting on him. His friends are waiting on him. And he will be a contribution to uh, the city and to our organization and to our families. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Franklin. Do the board members have any questions for Elder Franklin? I do not, thank you. No? Great. Thank you so much, Elder Franklin. I'm just double checking and making sure the other board members don't have any questions. I, I don't believe so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elder Franklin. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and move back uh, to case number three, Willie Seals. We have Miss Yvette Seals Brown, who is Mr. Seals' daughter, here to speak in support. Miss Brown? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Good morning. How are you? Okay. Um, Great. If you have a statement, you can go ahead and say it. I, I just wanted to say that um, my dad was, is very, very remorseful about the outcome of everything. Um, 40 years of someone's life is a long time. And um, I missed three-fourths of my life was without him. Um, I'm now a grandmother. He missed the birth of my two beautiful children who are now 34 and 36, Ricky and Brittany. He would adore them. Um, they, they're outstanding young people. I will now have a grandbaby, Journey, who's 21 months old. He hears her over the phone. He sees her sometimes in the video conference. It would be wonderful if he could take his last breath in the freedom, in freedom. He's, he'll be 84 years old tomorrow. How much harm can he do? He's not a menace to society. He was a, a, a Marine. He served his country. I just, I just want to see him myself. We live in a pandemic now. No one's guaranteed any length of time. I'll be 64 years old in a few months. I want to see him. I want my grandchildren to see him. I just feel as though he deserves to be out, and there's no doubt about it. <laughs> he is an upstanding person. Before all this went down, he never was had an issue in his life. He is a changed man. You could not be changed being behind bars for 41 years. So please, please just let him be. Just let him come out. Just let him taste freedom again. 
84 years old. Come on, people. A lot of people don't live that long. And he was able to sustain himself in those conditions for all that time. That speaks volumes about a person. Without incident, you know, he has a clean record being behind bars. I don't know about, <laughs> I don't even know if I could be like him. But I would like to know, I want you to know that his heart is good. His heart is good. So that's all I'm going to say. But I thank you all for taking the time to hear me. Thank you so much, Ms. Brown. We really do appreciate your time. I also love your glasses. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We also have Ms. Boyette from the Philadelphia yeah. DA's office. Uh, she's available for any questions from the board as well for Mr. Seals. Good morning. If the board I, has any questions uh, or if Ms. Boyette, if you had anything to say, go ahead. Sure. The only thing I wanted to proactively offer uh, just now that we're here is that we do have trial transcripts from Mr. Seals's case. And so if those are of interest, I can forward those now to any member of the board or their staff or to secretary trustee or to Pam, just happy to do so. Thank you so much as always, we appreciate your time. Hello. Yes. Hello, this is Marquita Greenwood. Um, I have two of my mother's sisters that would like to talk if they could. Uh, uh, Ms. Greenwood, could you just give us one second? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Greenwood, we're going to um, reach out to you and and um, and see if we can get some of those uh, uh, that input in writing so that we can get that to the board. Thank you so much, Ms. Greenwood. We appreciate your time. Um, so we're going to move on to case number four, John C. Lesko. John C. Lesko has actually withdrawn his application. Um, so, Governor, that concludes the 9 a.m. public hearing session of the Pennsylvania Board of Pardons. We will return at 11.15 a.m. to take the vote on the, on the commutation cases. Okay. Are we live streaming? Here we go. All right. I will call to order this virtual session of the Pennsylvania Board of Pardons. This session will likely last until 11.30 a.m. We will first take up the public vote for three commutation cases. There are three possible outcomes. Application recommended, which means that we are recommending to Governor Wolf that clemency be granted to an applicant. Applicant denied, which means that a recommendation for clemency will not be granted at this time. The board could also vote to hold an application under advisement. This is similar to a continuance and could be done for various reasons if the board is not prepared to vote on a case. I want to stress that the ultimate decision to accept or reject the recommendation of this board is solely at the discretion of the governor. In addition, the governor is not required to act on a recommendation within a specific period of time. So with that, I will be in, begin the process of recording the public vote on the three commutation cases. In the matter of Richard Brinson Jr., Ms. Grayson, no. Dr. Williams. No. Mr. Gubernick. No. General Shapiro. Oh, I'm sorry. General Shapiro is not is not participating today. Governor Fetterman. No. Application denied. Daniel Rosado Jr. Miss Grayson. No. Dr. Williams. No. Mr. Gubernick. No. Governor Fetterman. Application denied. Willie Seals Jr., Miss Grayson. No. Dr. Williams. No. Mr. Gubernick. No. Governor Fetterman. No. Application denied. A reminder that Mr. John C. Lesko has withdrawn his application. Governor, this concludes the vote for the December 14th, 2022, 9 a.m. session of the Pennsylvania Board of Pardons. We are adjourned.